One of the things I love about all aspects of show business is a collaborative spirit. That's why I love doing theater. There's the writer and the director and the core of actors finding these words that have never been spoken before, hopefully if it's a new play. And in movies and film and TV and animation, this is the first time and possibly only time these things are gonna be cemented. So being part of a team, even though I don't get to take the Oscar home, I was the casting directors, we don't get Oscars, but uh, the team won the Oscar and it felt so great to be part of something, to have, to know that my little piece that I put in there to help find some of the roles and to voice several of them uh, added up to something of great note. And I'm very proud of uh, the producing team that gets a statue in their home. I'm okay. Uh, it's not about statues for me. It's about the process and the journey. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been a voiceover coach for 24 years. Uh, it's a passion of mine. I don't let it overtake my whole life. I'm a part-time coach, but a few times a year I teach a class. Uh, and a lot of your viewers may know people like Yuri Lowenthal and his wife, Tara Platt. They were some of my early students. Very proud of the success that they've enjoyed. Um, I do try to make an even balance between teaching the craft of voiceovers, but also the business of it. A very wise person said to me when I moved here, there are two words in show business, and art isn't one of them. Hey! Write that down. It's good. Uh, so it is a business, and it must be thought of as a business. You are the you acting company. You happen to be the product, but also the sales team, the CEO, and everybody behind trying to get that to be a profitable company. So when I coach my actors, I certainly am getting them in the booth and getting them to learn how to analyze text, which I could go on for a very long time, that the big differentiator in this game isn't how wacky is your voice, but how deep is your analysis of the words you're saying. Because honestly, there are a lot of great vocal technicians that have incredible range, but being an adept actor is gonna be the thing that, that tilts the work in your favor. I wanna sneak in a lot of industry know-how about you need a killer demo to go market. That's how you get representation, which is how you get job op or audition opportunities. So the flow chart is train, make a demo, get representations so that you can be up at bat to, to win jobs. So I try to harp on that very simple flow chart when I coach. It depends if it's an actor I've worked with before. Sometimes I know, yeah, that's as good as that read's going to get. We're moving on. Um, and I also know some actors love the challenge, love the critique, and I can be really nano in my directing. And I could talk about pacing or pitch or attitudes or you know, how far away the other actor is. Like I'll say, hey, that's a great read, but you are about two feet closer to the other character than the read you just gave. And I can be really, really picky with certain people. How do I know when it's done? I think there's just a click, like that's that's what I want. Um, not a big fan of line reading. I like my actors to breathe their own life into things. And I think I'll credit myself with being a good communicator, is I will discuss all the trappings of where you are in a public place or a private place, an indoor space, an outdoor space, who you're talking to, your relationship. I'll give them all those analytical sensibilities, but it's their job to breathe life into the, into the line. Back in the day, uh, there was uh, a movie being cast called As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson and Greg Kinnear. You stay just the way you are because you are a perfect man and I'm going to take you home and get you something to eat. In the movie, Greg Kinnear has a little dog named Verdell. And my agent called me and said, can you do a Brussels Griffin? And I said, of course I can do a Brussels Griffin. Talk about taking risks, say yes, and then figure it out. Whoever this Brussels Griffin guy is, I've got to listen to a couple of video uh, segments and study his voice. And by tomorrow morning, I'll have a Brussels Griffin impersonation. So I go to the local video store, look that up, the old blockbuster. And I walked in, I said, I need to rent a few uh, Brussels Griffin movies. And I'm like, we don't have any Brussels Griffin. We don't know who that is. I said, well, he must be an actor. I need to rent. So I called my agent the next morning and I said, I feel like a total idiot. I don't know who Brussels Griffin is. And she said, it's a breed of dog, you dummy. Get to the audition. You gotta get to Sony in 24 minutes. So I raced to Sony and I entered the lobby 
and there's a lobby filled of guys walking around with little headphones on, and they're the dog people. And they're literally, like, you're like in an asylum. People go, <laughs> and I was like, I'm in a room full of people acting like dogs, and I'm not a dog person. I don't do impersonations. So I thought, I took up an audition slot. I'd best do the, the audition. So they walk you in, you have to watch a seven minute segment of the whole, of, of a piece of movie that they've put together for you. And then the second pass, you've got a little, well, we'd call it lip sync, but we'll call it snout sync. And then I had a snout sync, the little dog. I'm like, doing like dog noises. I got the gig. Take some risks, but do your research. There's a lesson too. Do whatever research is available to you.